I want to tell you a story about the day a huge storm destroyed my whole village. The winds were so strong that they blew houses away, and the rain so heavy that they washed the earth off the hills and turned my whole village into a lake. We didn't know that the storm was coming, and so we had no time to prepare. All that we could do was climb on our roof and hope that the walls of our house would not wash away in the flood. Everyone in the village did the same. For the people who lived by the river, they were not so lucky. The river rose up so fast, it washed their houses away like they were made of paper. Even those who lived on the hills were not safe because when the earth moved down the hill, it covered their homes. All night the storm raged and we prayed for morning. The storm caused so much damage, I did not recognize our village anymore. Our own house was badly damaged and we lost our cow in the landslide. Dawe and Mama were really upset and worried about how they would repair the house, buy a new cow and keep paying for my school fees. I was so worried. I didn't want to give up school. Eventually, Dawe decided he would have to sell his new bicycle, which he had tied to the roof of the house during the storm. When I went to visit my friend Jean, I was shocked because his house was fine and they had lost none of their animals. I asked Jean to tell me his secret so that if the storm comes again, my family would be safe too. The village chief called a community meeting and Dawe went. A woman from the Red Cross came to give them advice on what to do to protect our village from heavy rains. We all agreed to work together to make our village a safer place to live. We stopped cutting down trees to use for firewood and planted more trees on the hillside. And we dug terraces into the side of the hills and planted bushes. This means next time it rains, the roots of the trees will hold the soil together and stop it sliding down the hill and covering our homes and animals. We cleaned all the rubbish out of the drainage channels in the village so that when it rains, they don't get blocked and overflow. Most of the families living right beside the river and valley decided to rebuild their homes higher off the ground and a little further away so that if the river bursts its banks again, their homes will be safe. People who lost their homes in the landslide also decided to build back somewhere safer because we learned that we should never build our homes or cattle sheds in areas where landslides are common. Then we set up a warning system so everyone would know when a storm was coming. When people received messages on their phone or heard on the radio that a storm was coming, they would go through the village and blow a horn and beat drums to warn everyone. We also agreed that every day someone would check the height and width of the river to make sure it was not close to bursting its banks. We agreed that if the river was higher or wider than a certain level, we would raise the alarm. Two months later, the storms came to our village again. Mama and Dawe were so worried, we didn't have money to replace another cow. But I knew we'd be okay because I remembered what I learned from Jean's family, whose house and animals survived the last storm. First, we filled empty sacks with sand and earth while Dawe tied down the roof to make sure it would stay on in the wind. We used sandbags to build a wall around our house so that if it floods, they will soak up all the water and stop it from coming into the house. Then, we put sandbags on the roof to make it heavier and less likely to fly away in the winds. Next, we cut all the loose branches off the trees and bushes that were close to the house so that they wouldn't break off in strong winds and fly into the house and damage it. Then we dug a trench all the way around the house so that when the rains came, the water would flow away from the house. Mama made sure we had stores of essential items in the house to see us through the storm, like enough food, clean water, medicines, a torch and a radio with extra batteries. We even put some of these into a small bag ready to grab if the house floods and we needed to live in a hurry. We gathered all the important documents together like our birth certificates, ownership papers 
and ID cards and put them in a plastic waterproof bag so they wouldn't be destroyed in the rain. Dawe made sure anything electrical like the radio and mobile phone was switched off and plugged and stored high off the ground to protect them if the house floods. Finally, we all sat down as a family and made a plan on what we should do and where we should go if the rain becomes so heavy the house starts to flood and we need to leave. Mama showed us a safe place higher up the mountain and how we should get there safely if we needed to evacuate. Finally, Dawe made sure that the mobile phone was fully charged and called the neighbors to warn them and tell them how to keep safe. Mama sent me to run and tell our neighbors without phones, especially Auntie Beatrice, who was 81 and lives by herself, and Uncle Sinzumunzi, who uses crutches. The next day was so dark, it felt like the middle of the night. Dawei took the new cow over to Jean's house because their cow shed was in a safer place than ours. Mama checked that we had all the food, clean water and medicines that we would need and that the torch and radio were working. She made me and Kanyange explain the evacuation route to her again. By lunchtime, the wind started and the rain came. It made so much noise on the roof, we couldn't even hear the information on the radio. Mama kept us together in the center of the house, away from the doors and windows. It was a bad storm and rained for hours. We were so scared. I wondered what was happening to the rest of the village. After a few hours, some water started to leak through the door and we were really worried. All our furniture would be washed away like the last time. But finally the rain and wind stopped. This time, the water on the floor only covered my feet. Phew! When the rain stopped, we put the radio back on to find out what was happening. The news told us that the storm had passed and it was safe to go outside. We ran out to check the house. It was amazing! There was lots of water outside and the roof was undamaged. When the water went away, Mama opened all the windows and swept the water out of the house. We put all the furniture outside to dry and if we had any electrical items, it was really important to make sure that they were dry before plugging them in or switching them on to avoid getting an electric shock. Then I realized we hadn't seen Kanyage for ages. When I found her, she was playing next to a stream of flood water. I grabbed her quickly because sometimes flood water can be deeper than you think. And even shallow water, ankle deep, can be enough to knock you off your feet if it's fast moving. We didn't get through this storm to lose Kanyange now. Then I saw Mama trying to collect flood water for cooking. I told her that John Claude's mother had told me never to drink or use flood water because it can be full of germs and make everybody in the family sick especially if latrines have been flooded too. I ran to the water tap to collect some safe water for Mama. What a difference in our village from the last storm! Most of the houses were still standing and there was no landslides from the hills. So even though we cannot stop the storms from coming, there are lots of things we can do to prepare and protect ourselves. From now on in this village, we will always 1. Plant trees to protect against landslides. 2. Keep drainage canals clear so they don't get blocked in the rains and overflow. 3. Build our elevated houses in safe places away from the river banks and areas that always flood in the rains. 4. Make sure we have a warning system so everyone in the community knows when danger is coming. 5. Make our houses safe and secure by using sandbags to stop flood water getting in digging trenches around the house and tying the roof down to keep it secure in strong winds. 6. Plan an evacuation route with my family so we know where to go to be safe and how to get there if we have to leave the house quickly. 7. Have stores of food, water, medicines, a torch and radio to see us through the storm. 8. Use the radio and our phones to find out what is happening and to warn our family and friends. 9. Never drink or play in flood water.
With these lessons learned, my family is now much safer and better prepared for floods and landslides. I hope my story will help your family to do the same.